Hello friends! Welcome to the Earth Tones Girl channel and Vlogmas 2022. to episode number two of Vlogmas. I am so happy to be here with all of you today. Um, I'm very proud of myself for keeping this up. <laughs> Doing well. Um, I have added some little fairy lights around here and added a candle. I just wanted it to feel even cozier than it did in the last episode. And thank you so much to everybody who watched and left comments about the giveaway. Oh my gosh. So let's talk about the giveaway. <laughs> ah, so many of you reached out. So last week, people are leaving comments. I talked about this giveaway. I am so excited and oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm checking my comments and I realize that there are these spam messages and people are getting messages that say they've won a prize to please reach out to them at telegraph earth tones girl and there's my face but it's the it's the wrong um url or whatever it's not me and i was panicking there was one of those messages on every comment or like almost every comment and i started freaking out. I start deleting them. I'm checking all the behind the scenes and my dashboard. For those of you that are on YouTube studio, you know what that means. Um, and I'm just trying to figure this all out. And I ended up blocking the bogus account. So it turned out to be a scam. And so many of you sent me messages, email messages with your information. Thank God you didn't reply directly to them. Um, with your contact information saying thank you so much that you'd won and so many were so excited and others were like, wait a minute, this that doesn't sound like you. I don't think that's you and you were questioning it and there were DMs on Instagram and messages on Ravelry. I, it was just customer messages from my website. There was just so much, this huge influx of what's going on. Um, so I spent, a, a while, like the better part of two hours trying to clean up the mess and reply to people's messages. And I was trying to take deep breaths the whole time and saying, okay, tis the season for scammers. So I thanked everybody 
in a message here on YouTube. I put it on the community board. I know some of you don't always see the community board depending on what device you're watching this episode on. So some of you can't see it. I don't think you can see the community board on an iPad, but anyway, um, I did leave a message here on the community board with an explanation and apology. I did the same on Instagram and you all are so patient and so kind and so generous and supportive. Thank you so, so much to everybody that left a message saying, just breathe, it's okay. It didn't sound like you. We all reached out to, to figure out if it was you. And, and so everybody did the right thing. There was no harm done. Nobody gave out um, dangerous information, personal information. So, uh, and ultimately I think one person told me that the scammer was trying to just basically get money, which is the whole point of these scams. So. But everything was fine with her as well. So <sighs> I could take a slight breath, but I was so upset. I was so upset. And you all, if you've been watching for a while or you've just started watching or you've been here for a while, um, this channel, this space means so much to me. And to have had it compromised even for a little while was, was I was in a state. So... And thank you to my daughter who was very patient. And I was like, what does that mean? What is that button? What's happening? <laughs> so, um, I can yell. For those of you who said I have a very calm and soothing voice, thank you. But when I get upset or when I get riled or my feathers get a little flustered, I, I can turn the volume up. <laughs> so thank you to my beautiful patient daughter who, who helped me figure this out and all of that. So I do think the problem is now solved. Not saying another scammer won't come around, but anytime if you see a message like that pop up again, please, if you have a moment, just take a moment and scan through the comments. And if you see everybody's getting the same message, it is a scam. It is not real. It is not me. Um, unfortunately, I only had the one prize to give. So <laughs> it's just a debacle. But anyway, it's fine. No real damage done, just an inconvenience. This was an inconvenience. This wasn't even a problem. It was an inconvenience. It was a speed bump. And if you treat things as such and breathe, it'll be fine. <laughs> so enough about that. Let's talk about some fun stuff. <laughs> so I did pick a winner and it was so hard. It was so hard to pick just one. It really was. It, I, ugh. I really wish, and it's going to sound corny, but I think you know that I'm sincere and I try my best to be sincere. I really, really wish. Some of those comments were so personal and I, I welcomed people and gave them a space to vent about whatever is happening or not happening or that they want to happen. And some people took me up on the offer and it, I was so touched and felt grateful that this space felt comfortable and safe enough for people to share on that level. Uh, so thank you to those that did. Um, there was one in particular that was just, I, I don't want to share here because I feel like even though it was shared on a public forum, it was just a comment and it still felt kind of private. So I won't share the details, but it, it just, it, it just got me. And um, to the person with the six sons, you know who you are if you're watching. I am thinking about you. Um, I'm sending you positive energy. I'm sending you um, healing thoughts. I know that does not solve your problem, um, but please know that you are being thought of. Um, and I'm just, I'm just so sorry for what you're dealing with. So I just wanted to say that to her. Um, and I did pick a winner. Um, you guys, this time of year is so hard. And I know I talked about that and I don't want to make this a downer, but it's it's just, it's challenging. Just please know that you're understood and, and it's not all just fluff and lights and cuteness. Like you really, people understand that it's hard and I understand that it's hard. So um, I did pick a winner, which is what I started to say two minutes ago. <laughs> I did pick a winner and um, I'm just looking at, I did have to, I am relatively unscripted, but I did have to write this down. Um, her name is Christina S. That is all that showed up at the top of her comment, Christina S. I will put her name um, on the screen here. And just to be sure, in case there were multiple Christinas, because there were over 500 comments. Wow, mind blown. Uh, she is a community nurse. 
She has just finished two sweaters for her grandchildren, and she is hoping to finish a toy cat for her grandson. So Christina, if that is you, Christina S., if that is you, please send me an email to earthtonesgirl at gmail.com. Please send me an email with your contact information, um, and I will get your advent calendar sent out to you ASAP. So this coming Sunday is three weeks in. So as I said, um, I wasn't going to stress too much about the timing. I think it's ultimately just having one of these that is the fun part. And yeah, so so many people. So let's talk about something else. So many of you um, didn't know what an advent calendar was or, or hadn't heard the term before. So again, just to clarify, it's basically a way of counting down the days of Advent, um, which is usually the four Sundays before East, before Christmas, I'm sorry, wrong holiday, before Christmas, and you count down the days until Christmas Day. Sometimes that is done with um, chocolate. My kids have chocolate Advents that they have every morning, uh, which makes for a very fun car ride to school. <laughs> and... Um, so they have their chocolates in the morning, and uh, then my daughter requested a book advent this year, and my son wanted a sock advent. So I put together, which is a little elaborate, but uh, my daughter is opening a book each day from now until Christmas Day, and my son is opening socks, a packet, little gift wrap package of socks every day, and they are thrilled to bits and I also told them this is also included in their Christmas gifts for the season so um trying to uh make them happy and joyful but not spoil them at the same time so uh that is um so that is what an advent is and again it can be opened every day uh this one that I've been I've been opening here the the women in literature uh and I I put some footage in uh at the beginning of the of this episode of all the days up to today. Today is December 8th. Oh, I didn't change. Let's change the calendar. <laughs> Hold on. All right, I'm gonna change the calendar. Just realized I didn't change it. So um, yes, I opened everything from December 1st up to yesterday. Today is the 8th, so hold on a second. Hold on, let's flip that. And today is Thursday. Okay, oops, now it's right. <laughs> so let's put that back. Okay, perfect. Um, yes, I opened everything up to today and I have today's, where did I put today's? Oh dear, where is it? Oh, it's here. <laughs> um, I have today's ready and we'll open this one together. I just wanted to share that with you. Um, so yes, Christina, congratulations. That is what an advent is. You can count down every day the... Charles Dickens' calendar is a countdown on every Sunday. They can be different. You can make them up for yourself. That might be something really fun to do for next year for yourself. Uh, start putting away... You can get these little paper uh, envelopes from Amazon or wherever, or just save little paper bags or little plastic bags, um, whatever you'd like, or just wrap them in tissue paper or little leftover bits of uh, Christmas wrapping paper, and um, maybe make little skeins. You can weigh them for yourself. Usually, um, Advent minis are about 10 to 20 grams, so you can just wind off, get a small little scale, you can wind off some yarn uh, or use leftovers from projects throughout the year and create a little advent for yourself. You can put little notes of encouragement in for yourself. It could just be notes. It could be little candles. It can be anything you want, anything that reminds you of the year, of the season. So there you go. Um, so Christina, congratulations. I can't wait to get this off to you. Um, I have opened my Charles Dickens calendar, but I was a little hesitant. I wasn't sure whether I should share it since um, I don't really want to spoil the surprise. Maybe I'll save it to the end. So if you don't want to watch, I'll put up a little spoiler. <laughs> so if you don't want to see what I have opened so far, I've opened week one and two and oh, stunning. <laughs> I've opened weeks one and two. So if you don't want to see, um, or Christina, since you're the winner, if you don't want to see and you want it to be a surprise, then just 
I'll put the spoiler up and a spoiler alert and just don't watch past that point. Okay. Okay. Deal. Deal. Okay. Um, so yes, what else is happening? Uh, I have an FO to share with you. So let me grab that. Oops. Little earthquake. Let me grab that and, um, I'll show you. So the, in, because I'm not doing Vlogmas every day, um, I, I've decided to give each little vlog, Vlogmas episode a, a name. So um, the name of today's episode is Gift Giving, since I was awarding the winner. And I also wanted to share with you, if you are making, since many of you are, a lot of you shared your uh, making plans in the comments also. And if you are making socks or smaller items as holiday gifts, uh, and whatever holiday it is that you're celebrating, um, I thought I would just share a little packaging. Look at that. <laughs> it is a really simple label. You can write your care instructions right here on the back. And I found this on Pinterest many years ago. And there is a link to this to these labels in my profile on Instagram and I will add a link for you in the um, description box under this video but it is such a nice way to package your socks uh, then you can gift wrap them or just maybe put a bow on this or a little sprig of lavender whatever you'd like or gift them just like this it's a great um, the label can apply to anything I just happen to put it on and that's what I love about it too it's not specific to oh well it does say hand knit but um I think there's also I was gonna say it wasn't specific to making but I for, as I'm looking at it I'm still even forgetting that it says knit but uh there are some other labels if you will go to Pinterest or just look online if you're not on Pinterest uh if you look online there's some that just say handmade with love or hand crocheted or hand spun so finding these labels again I'll link to this particular one but um I just think this is a really cute way of wrapping presents. So I will take this out. And the care instructions are also really good uh, if you're gifting, just to let people know what if you're not using a super wash or you know, they shouldn't just throw it on into the into the washer or definitely not in the dryer. I gifted a pair of socks to my sister uh, many moons ago and she threw them in the dryer. Oops. And I don't, I don't blame her. I really wasn't that clear. I said you can, they were machine washable. It was a super wash yarn, but I didn't mention anything about uh, drying. So that was my fault, not hers. Um, but yeah, so it's a great, it's a great way to just ensure that there's no damage to what you've spent quite a bit of time working on. So here is my FO for this week. I finished my freckled whimsy as I'm talking through the little space. <laughs> I finished my freckle whimsy socks and I love them so much. Again, this is the freckled whimsy 24 stripe advent skein from, oops, from 2021. Look at that. They're so beautiful. And the stripe goes from this purple down to the blue. That's 24 stripes right down to the blue. And they're so beautiful. And it came with this really pretty um, sort of pine green uh, contrasting color. So here they are. And I just used my basic uh, sock exploration pattern, which is available on my website and on Ravelry. I will link to that down below for you as well. So yes, I will be wearing these at some point over the next few weeks. Um, what else? I started my cozy knitter now the cozy knitter what well, that was in the basket right back there it is now living in this really cute project bag right here and this is by it's got a wool lining and i just love the star shape which is also a quilting pattern shape so i just love this bag so much so i have started the skeins now what the cozy knitter does she i think she might have been the original person or dyer to come up with and I'm correct me if I'm wrong she was the first let's rephrase she was the first person or the first dyer that I was aware of that was doing a 24 stripe advent skein and what she does is she sends you two two k two skeins this one here let's just roll that up two skeins 
that are tied together. You separate them. Each one, these it's 100 grams, so each one is 50. And you can, every day, you knit a stripe um, and you count down to Christmas via a stripe. So you can do these one at a time. You can do them two at a time. You can do them concurrently, uh, meaning two at a time on one needle or two at a time on two separate needles. Whatever you like. As I said last week, knitter's choice. And so I have started mine. Uh, I haven't gotten very far. I unfortunately had a very sick baby boy home with me for the last couple of days. Um, he is finally, today was day three, uh, but he is finally starting to feel better. I'm just gonna sit back a little and knit for a bit um, as I chat with you. So he wasn't feeling too well, so he was home with me for the last couple of days. Um, he is home now, but feeling a lot better. Um, he just has a really awful sounding cough, so I just didn't think that would be fair to anybody to have him hacking in the middle of class. So I'm keeping him home one more day. Hopefully he can go back in tomorrow. So yes, so I'm knitting my Advent skein and she included the contrasting, she included a skein, a mini, 20 gram mini in the white. So I decided to do that. I think last year, last year or year before, I didn't even bother with the cuff, I just started right in with the um, with the main skein. It's up to you, there's no rules. If you wanna do a white cuff, great. If you don't, that's okay too. So I will definitely be doing this year. I really, I'm in the mood for the white cuff heel and toe. Uh, and I have my little progress keeper here. It is just a little, let's see if I can put my hand there. There's a little snowflake, so that is hanging there. And I am also hoping to have some snowflakes available in my shop. Uh, don't worry, I will let you know when those are available. And they're not specific to um, Christmas or any other specific holiday. They are more specific to the winter season. Um, so I thought that would be a little bit more um, of an inclusive thing to do. So... Yeah, that's so I've started. This is the first color. This is day one, and I'm just starting the second color. It looks white, but it's really kind of a, I don't know if you can see it there. It's kind of a taupe kind of a color, like a tan color. So that is day two. We are up to day eight, so I'm hoping to catch up. <laughs> um, yeah, and what else? What else can I share with you? So, oh, I know. I'll tell you in one sec. <laughs> So there is a, another little holiday uh, tradition that was started a few years back um, by Danny, who is Little Bobbins on Instagram. And I don't know if Danny has a, a website. She's based in, in England. And a few years ago, maybe, I don't even know, four years, five years ago, Danny uh, created a sock knitting pattern for a Christmas Eve cast on. And Danny was the first person that I was aware of that was doing a Christmas Eve cast on. So most people, their projects are, are knit. Um, I mean, their packages are wrapped and under the tree and Christmas Eve is usually, at least for my family, it's just my immediate four, my husband and our kids. And we have a really quiet dinner together and then we watch a movie together. We sit around the tree, kind of all snuggled on the couch and um, have hot chocolate or tea. It's just such a quiet, peaceful evening and I love it so much. And for the last couple of years, I have done a Christmas Eve cast on in the spirit of Danny's um, tradition. And she also does, as I started to say, she does a pattern many years i think she's done one every year she creates or designs a pattern for the christmas eve cast on and she has one for this year that is stunning it's so beautiful i will try to put a picture of that right here for you it's so so beautiful um it's called by the fireside socks by danny of little bobbins and tell me that that cuff does not look like the top of a Christmas pudding. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. It's so beautiful. So I will absolutely be doing a Christmas Eve cast on. 
and I'm not sure what that is yet because I have another idea in my mind. So I'll either be doing Danny's pattern or the pattern in my head, we'll see. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you. So if you are inclined, and you know what, if you're not celebrating Christmas, you can do it, you can cast on on the first night of Hanukkah or the first day or evening of Kwanzaa, whatever it is that you celebrate. And if you don't celebrate any of the above, just cast on whenever it makes you happy. Whenever you have the time and a quiet moment, you can just sit and cast on. So I will be doing that. And then I also do a New Year's Eve cast on. So usually I'm able, once, once Christmas is over for us, we really, the kids are off until usually January 2nd or 3rd. So I um, usually cast on, I do my Christmas Eve cast on and usually can get those socks finished in the week and then cast on another pair for New Year's Eve. And oh my gosh, have I got a skein for you. So I have that sitting right here. Tell me this doesn't look like just winter perfection. I... It is. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm speechless. I love this so much. It's called Carols in the Snow, and it is by Tiny Human Knits. And I saw this a couple of weeks ago on her Instagram feed and thought, yes, that is my Christmas Eve cast on right there. So here it is. And look at this contrasting mini. It is just so so perfect so i will be casting this on um and i have two of these i think the other one is right there this is a 50 gram micro set so i will be casting on and then whatever is left over i will probably make everything november mitts out of um and that pattern is by jen yard who is everything shapes us on instagram <sighs> so yeah that is um those are my holiday plans so far. So our tree is up. Um, the tree is finally up. We have decorated and we scaled back a lot. Uh, cheers, everyone. <laughs> um, we scaled back quite a bit on our decorations. I feel like that's something else I felt like I was doing was decorating for people to come over. Um, and to impress, for lack, entertain, um, make feel welcome people that were coming over. And to me, honestly, the house started to just feel cluttered. And then putting all of it away at the end of the season. <laughs> I love pulling it all out to set it all up, but um, putting it all away can be a bit of a challenge. So this, with the exception of that uh, metal, it's actually a metal... Um, little house uh with the exception of that all of this pretty much fits in a box so just one box it's my little box it gets labeled and tucked under our stairs so yeah we couldn't fit a couple of things last year and i said to my husband just you know let's donate it we really don't need it we don't need it it's for show let's donate it i had multiple trees in the house i have scaled back tremendously on all of that so and the house just feels light and airy yet cozy at the same time. So less is more. Uh, and if you know me, you know that I have been, I'm a devout <laughs> Downton Abbey fan. And um, Isabel Crawley says at one point in the show, much cattle, much care. And that is exactly what it was feeling like. So I've gotten rid of some cattle, <laughs> less to care about. And the house feels really good. So there you go. Um, so yeah, let's open up today's Women in Literature Advent. Another thing that so many of you commented on was um, you loved my love of literature and I, I just, I can't get enough. <laughs> and you also shared your love of audiobooks and some of you shared some titles that you're reading. So, and I found another series. Oh gosh, what is it? Um, Christmas at the tea, at the cream tea cafe or something. But 
I'll add that in the show notes also, but um, I'm not recommending it yet because I, I haven't started it. So I don't want to recommend something that's like, ugh. Um, but the audio sounded so lovely. And for me, audio is, the, the narrator's voice is the experience, basically. I mean, yes, there is the story, but the narrator can make or break an audiobook. And um, my first audiobook was the Harry Potter books by Jim Dale. And Jim Dale, the Harry Potter books by J.K. Rowling that was narrated. The American versions were narrated by Jim Dale. And he won, I don't even know how many Grammys for all of, for his performance, because it was a performance. I mean, he created over 200 voices for the characters in these seven books. And it was just, I was spoiled rotten after that. Um, I didn't even know who to listen to because nothing sounded as good as as amazing and had it had as much depth to listen to so it was harry potter first and this is how many years ago now years and years and years because i i started listening right after the last book came out so the deathly hollow so i don't even know how long ago that was and um the second book i listened to was the night circus also narrated by jim dale and just magic and a couple of years later or a couple of years ago i it was finally clarified for me and it made all the difference. So this may help some of you that say, I don't like audiobooks, but there's a difference between an audiobook being performed for you and an audiobook that is read to you. Performed for you versus read to you. There are times when I want a performance and there are times where I just want the simplicity of being read to. So there's no need for voices. There's no need to act the book. Just simply read the book to me. Again, if the narrator's voice is nails on a chalkboard, then I'm going to pass. But <laughs> there's that difference because sometimes I think people get frustrated. Like, oh, the, the narration was so flat and it was kind of boring. But it wasn't really boring or was it just not performed? So that was a huge game changer. Once I made that click in my head to how I listen to audiobooks. So I feel like it opened me up to a lot more. I wasn't looking for a Jim Dale to perform and act it out for me. So, um, and I've t I've listened to this many. I, I really, I can't even, <laughs> my audible is just out of control. Um, but one thing I have been doing is um, since this Charles Dickens advent, I've been reading Charles Dickens with my son. My boy loves to be read to. And I kept saying, Siege, why don't you read? Why don't you read? You should read. And and um, he's like, well, can you read it for me? And I, excuse me, I'm like, is he just being lazy? Or does he, he reads beautifully and he can read very, very well. And he, he knows when to pause and all of that. But he loves that cozy comfort of being read to. And I love reading out loud. So <laughs> match made in heaven. So I found this at um, Barnes and Noble and we've been reading this together and it was like a Barnes and Noble like their classic series so it, it was it wasn't very expensive and it has how many stories it's a Christmas Carol and other Christmas writings by Charles Dickens and it has um, a Dickens Chronicle Christmas festivities a story of the goblins who stole a sexton a Christmas episode from Master Humphrey's Clock, A Christmas Carol, The Haunted Man, and The Ghost's Bargain, A Christmas Tree, What Christmas Is As We Grow Older, that one definitely struck a chord, and The Seven Poor Travelers. This has felt like a gift in and of itself, and I'm actually using the bookmark this is the bookmark that came with this advent. So I've tucked that in here. And yes, this is women in literature and I'm reading literature written by a man, but it doesn't matter. It's literature, y'all. <laughs> and I am loving it. One thing I do love to do is, um, I think in my next life, I want to be a book narrator. What do you think? I would love to do that. Like, love to do that. Um, so I've just been practicing and reading to my kids and it's just been really fun. And uh, I do voices for them. I love to read with an English accent. No, I'm not doing that here. <laughs> ah, I can hear you. Oh, Denise, just do it for like a second. Nope, 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 I am not. <laughs> That's it. That's all you're going to get. <laughs> so 
So, um, but I love it. I absolutely love speak and, and it gets on my husband's nerves, which means I do it more. Um, so it's just something I do. It's just something I, I'm, I, I find fun. And whether it's a Yorkshire accent or a Cockney accent or an Oxford accent or whatever, I just, I love all British English accents. So, um, yeah. So anyway, reading this to my son, um, and opening this advent has been such a delight. It's been such a delight. There, there are books that I wasn't familiar with. Um, I think this, which way? That color right there, 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 <laughs> is Seely from the main character from A Color Purple. And, oh my gosh, it's the purple. It's the purple from The Color Purple. And it it's... Rachel, you have nailed it. You have touched my heart with this advent. I love it so much. So let's open day eight together. So what I've been, and what I've been doing is I, I've been reaching into the bag and reading the, not peeking, I read the description first and then look at the color. So today's is, I'll hold that up for you. And this is Lady Murasaka, Murasaki. I wish you could understand me, but of course it is not the way of this world that we are ever completely understood. Fanning my eyes because I'm a crier, y'all. I'm a crier and that is so true on so many levels. Anyway, Lady Musa Murasaki was the pen name for a Japanese noblewoman in the early 11th century who wrote one of the first ever novels, The Tale of Genji. What I particularly love are her diaries, which are wonderful, which are a wonderful mixture of snarky opinions of the other nobles, thoughtful self-examinations, and beautiful descriptions of the world she lived in. And this was chosen by Emily. I love it. I love it. So let's see the color. Hmm. Look at that. Beautiful. Have I read the story? Do I know who this character is? No. But just from that brief description and glancing at this quickly, it looks like a solid, but it's not. And these little pops of color, some of which may be buried, like here. Look at that little burst of blue in there. Reminds me of the things we as individuals hide about ourselves, the parts that no one will ever truly understand. So, hmm, sorry, holding it upside down. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So this is going to go in the cubby. Um, and you know what? I think I will end there. I um, will knit some more on my sock. Hopefully I will be a little more caught up by my next episode. And if I'm not, that's okay too. <laughs> and I will add some pictures. Of, I promise to share some patterns that were suggestions for your advents if you do have an advent calendar so I will add some pictures of that at the end here and yeah I'm going to enjoy my little candle the name of that candle is Christmas Market by Wax and Wool and I'm just going to knit a little bit and finish my tea I hope you all are peaceful um, finding joy finding moments of joy and um, I will see you all again really really soon thank you so much for joining me congratulations Christina S on winning the advent thank you so much to everybody that felt comfortable to leave a comment thank you thank you thank you mm -hmm.